Obama did it. Obama came out against identity politics. That surprised the hell out of me. Can you believe it? Barack Obama gave a speech, and in it he said something to the effect of, you can't just dismiss someone because they're white and because they're male. This particular article I have pulled up from the San Francisco Chronicle, I have not read, it's an opinion piece. Um, but I, it touches on what just happens from July 20th, where he, he gave a speech, among other things. You know, he talked about a lot of things, about how we need to move forward. He said something like, you ever notice how the, the people you think are smart are the people who agree with you? And everyone laughs, and it's like, right, yes. Thank you, Obama. Thanks, Obama, to, to quote the meme. Anyway, let's read through the story and see what, what the SF Chronicle has to say about Obama calling out identity politics. Democracy demands that we're able to also get inside the reality of people who are different than us. So we can understand their point of view, maybe we can change their minds, maybe they'll change ours. That was Barack Obama speaking in South Africa on the, on the 100th anniversary of Nelson Mandela's birth. The former president went on to say that you can't change people's minds if you just out of hand disregard what your opponent has to say from the start. And you can't do it if you insist that those who aren't like you because they are white or they are male, somehow there is no way they can understand what I'm feeling. That somehow they lack standing to speak on certain matters. Bravo, Obama. There's this moment, I don't have it pulled up, but it was, a, it was a Huffington Post live segment where there was like a white British guy hosting and he, he has a caller who's like a, an Asian woman who told him basically that his opinion didn't matter because he was a white guy and he was like, okay, bye. And he like hung up on her or something. I thought that was kind of funny. But uh, that, that, I, I remember that because that's basically what she said. Like, you're a white male, you'll never understand what it's like. It's like, listen, right, we, we can't know 100% how you feel about your life. Literally, we are all different. No one's gonna know what it's like to be, you know, if, if you're five foot eight, then you won't understand what life is like for someone who's six foot one. But they can explain it to you, and that's how we function as a society. That people say, for me, this is what happens to me, and we're like, oh, that's interesting. And then you can actually agree or disagree. And sometimes, when you take criticism from other people, it helps expand your mind and solve your problems. Like, if you, if you said to me, I can't get a job because all of these companies, you know, hate my identity, you know, for whatever. Maybe you're a punk rock guy with tattoos. And then if I said, have you considered wearing a long sleeve shirt? I'm not oppressing you for having tattoos. I'm giving you a, a solution. And then they go, oh, it's a good idea. I'll wear a long sleeve shirt in the interview next time. Or they'll get mad at me, like, don't tell me what I can and can't wear. But that's, that's kind of what it's like, right? So Obama, speak it up, good for him. Now, uh, according to the article, they say I'm biased. I recently wrote a book making many of these and other points Obama made, but I also understand why many conservatives are, are dyspeptic, that's a new word for me, about Obama pushing this mes message. As president and on his path to the presidency, Obama often exploited identity politics to for partisan advantage. He called on Hispanic voters to push our, punish our enemies. He appointed to the Supreme Court Sonia Sotomayor, who famously suggested that a wise Latina on the bench would come to better conclusions than a white male would. Yikes. Obama also had an annoying tendency to ascribe bad faith to anyone who didn't share his opinions or conclusions. That sounds familiar. Nevertheless, Obama is right. Identity politics is a fundamentally undemocratic phenomenon. It assumes that vast numbers of individuals, human beings, can be reduced to the color of their skin, their gender, or their sexual orientation. Diversity among different kinds of people is celebrated everywhere, but intellectual, ideological, and political diversity among those groups is demonized. The idea that all I need to know about someone is the color of their skin, white or black, strips individuals of their individuality and their agency. Yes, and I would like Trevor Noah to read this. Uh, if you're not familiar, the other day I did a video because Trevor Noah made an alt-right argument that because 80% of the French soccer team in the World Cup was black, he said Africa won. And the funny thing is, the alt-right agrees with him. And France got mad, and Trevor Noah doubled down, and he was like, what, what? They are, Africa is celebrating this. And it's like, okay, that's literally like an ethno-nationalist argument. You know, that if you're black, you are African, not French. And I'm like, oh man, I'm not gonna get into that. But uh, that's one of the biggest problems with identity politics. So, but I guess identitarians are gonna share these views, right? Obama is also right when he says, strongman politics are ascendant suddenly, whereby elections and some pretense of democracy are maintained, the form of it, but those in power seek to undermine every institution or norm that gives democracy meaning. Obama implied that this is only a phenomenon of the right and was almost surely taking a veiled shot at Donald Trump. 
But this is a problem of the left too. The right-wing populism galloping across Europe is in no small part a response to the undemocratic tactics of the European Union, which looks at democratic accountability with sovereign disdain. More importantly, many nationalist populist voters backed Trump in part out of their understandable frustration with the way establishment ignored the will of voters and even constitutional pro prohibitions. Obama, for example, said he couldn't give amnesty to children of undocumented immigrants because the Constitution prevented him, then he did it anyway. But here's the thing, I'm still glad Obama is saying these things because again, he is mostly right. It's kind of like, I don't, I don't know if, if you know you guys watching this saw the video I just put out before this about identity politics and Buffy and all that. Anita Sarkeesian, who is considered to be, you know, a, a far left, you know, SJW, made some points about gen uh, about race booting uh, series and how she didn't like it, and that's a good point. And and so the, the reason I bring that up is, look, Obama can have a bunch of bad things that he said in the past and problems he's created, but as the title reads, Obama's words on identity politics better late than never. So uh, yes, very very great stuff, Obama. Now, how could you? How do you think those? who like identity politics, responded to Mr. Former President. Well, they weren't too happy because Vice wrote this story, Dear Obama, spare us the lectures. His speech on democracy and capitalism sounded like a laundry list of all the ways liberal elites failed America and made Trump possible. Wait, hold on. You're saying spare us the lectures, but then you're kind of agreeing with the other piece? that Obama listed the reasons why you guys screwed up and got Trump elected. I'll tell you what, when I traveled around to Trump rallies, one of the thing I heard, one thing, one of the things that I heard frequently from young people was that social justice and political correctness were why they were supporting Trump. It wasn't about policy for many young people. It was because of issues like I just talked about in my other video that people will, you know, take an existing intellectual property change a character, make, make it crappy, and then when you're like, hey man, this is bad, they'll call you racist for it. They'll tell you that because you're white and male, you have no idea what you're talking about. Everybody has an opinion and everyone is entitled to their opinion. It doesn't matter what your race or gender or identity is. So Obama is now calling this out, and sure enough, we get this wonderful article from Vice where they're like, Obama, spare us the lectures. You liberal elites made this possible. Well, to an extent, that's not wrong. The Democrats kind of cheated I say kinda just to protect myself, but you know, Bernie Sanders probably should have won those primaries and uh, been the candidate. I don't know if Bernie would have beat Trump. I do know it was something like 12 to 18% of Bernie voters voted for Trump because they, a lot of them were voting on uh, trade deal issues. When I talked to older guys at Trump rallies, they said they were, they were originally gonna vote for Bernie because he's a experienced, honest politician. They did not like his social Democrat policies. They thought he was too left, but he vowed to get rid of these trade agreements like NAFTA and the TPP. When Bernie was out, the only thing they cared about was those deals. Trump was the one who was, who was advocating it for, so they, so they went to Trump. Basically, this guy, you know, he writes about the things that uh, Trump, uh, that Obama said. I don't want to go too in-depth, but there is some stuff that I should bring up. He said, on Tuesdays, millions of Americans debated whether the president of the United States might be a Russian asset firmly in the pocket of Vladimir Putin. Barack Obama gave a speech. Really outstanding opening there, Vice. Just real, real good. Until now, the former president's post-Trump election activities have been the stuff of Occupy propaganda videos. A kite-surfing sesh with billionaire Richard Branson, a yacht hang with Oprah Winfrey, Tom, H Tom Hanks, Bruce Springsteen, and David Geffen, Wall Street speaking gigs worth $400,000 a pop, a book deal in combination with his wife Michelle, with a total advance reported to be in the $65 million range plans to get into the Netflix streaming content game. Yes, when you're no longer president, you serve your terms, you're basically rich forever. That's how it goes because everybody wants to read your book, see your speech, you know, they want to understand how the system works. Obama has also, to be fair, engaged in more than, in more normal 50-something American male throwbacks just showing up for jury duty before being sent home for the day and dancing like an awkward dad and in keeping with ex-presidents before him, he launched a charitable foundation stocked with uber-wealthy financiers. One of them is named, I shit you not, J. Kevin Poorman. Okay. Well, basically, this guy goes on to talk about the statements given by uh, Obama. And, I mean, look, it's all summarized in the beginning. So let's, let's find his final thesis. He says, It's no wonder so many of us miss Obama. We miss a smart, compassionate man who believes, as he noted in his speech, in facts and reality, and even knows he's not perfect, who challenges us to do the right thing. 
Obama was inspiring. He was even sometimes effective, but he wasn't exactly a great steward of American democracy, and his speech shows why. He portrays the failure of elites as the failure to understand the lot of the poor or those left behind. He sees their fatal fault, our fatal flaut, fault, as a lack of vision or sympathy. But it was more than that. Obama's failure was a failure of ideology. He preferred to leave the system mostly intact, and now the whole thing is blowing up before our eyes. Yes, let me just add that Obama did a bunch of really nasty things. Drone strikes, you know, uh, extrajudicial assassination, the National Defense Authorization Act, the AUMF, the list goes on. They called him deporter in chief. Obama is very worthy of criticism. He literally signed off on the execution of American citizens. I am not exaggerating. He has a thing called the, I believe it's the disposition matrix. They call it the kill list. But what's funny is you even have Democrats thinking George W. Bush was good. You know, George W. Bush comes out and says something critical about Trump and also on the left is cheering him on. This was a rather light jab at Obama because when Obama comes out and says, hey, y'all are wrong. You need to stop criticizing people simply because they're white and they're male. Well, then they have to come out and be like, Obama, we really liked you because you're smart and compassionate, but you failed us. So it is what it is. Anyway, long story short, I don't know. What do you think? Obama coming out and talking about uh, identity politics. You think he's serious? I kind of feel like this. I feel like they used identity politics because it was powerful for them. They wanted to get Hillary elected, so they played the far left feminism game of sexism and racism, and it backfired. Not entirely, but in a way it kind of did because it made a lot of people be like, I gotta vote for somebody else. I think it backfired. I also think it tore at the fabric of society and now I'm not surprised to see they're kind of trying to walk it back. They're trying to put these fires out, the fires that they started. Anyway, that's it for today. I don't got any more videos. I was thinking of doing one more, but I'm, I'm pretty wiped, so um, stick around. I'll have more videos about my, uh, on my main channel tomorrow, youtube.com slash timcast at 4 p.m. And I'll see you all then.